Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to our Draft Day Sports Pro Basketball 2020 Dynasty stream here on Twitch. Uh, if you tuned in last time, you will uh, recall that the uh, last season did not end well for us after our third playoff appearance uh, with the Orlando Mystics. Three out of three straight years, uh, we were let go by ownership as they decided that uh, I spent too much money as general manager and did not achieve the level of success they were after. So, uh, now we are in the off season and we had the opportunity to look for a number of jobs. There were six other openings outside of Orlando and uh, we narrowed it down to two choices. The Philadelphia Freedom, who went 26 and 56 last season, and if you uh, wonder why that was a choice, they have the number two pick in the draft. So it's always it's always fun when you can uh, rebuild a team with a very high draft pick. And our other choice that we narrowed it down to was the Phoenix Beans, uh, 44 and 38, a playoff team last season in the West. And uh, they have a, a good young player in a Yinde Rushing. And also, they have a lot of potential cap space. And uh, after a lot of thought, uh, I, I decided I liked what Indiana did, uh, coming in from one of the worst teams, having a ton of cap space, and then uh, doing really well in free agency to make themselves uh, a contender. As you can see, they won the Central Division last season at 55-27. and 27. So we decided that uh, I was going to take the general manager job, of the Phoenix Beans. <clears throat> so, the uh, let's take a look at the job goals, the player budget. Uh, the ownership is looking for us to stay around the cap, which will not be a problem because we will have a lot of cap space, so we won't be going over the, the cap. Uh, the expe ex expected success is just to make the playoffs, and this is a team that made the playoffs last season, and I think we can improve on that. And uh, the roster demand keep IND rushing and uh, that will not be a problem at all because I will be very happy to keep rushing. Let's take a look at our new team and start to get to know uh, our new players. So, uh, as mentioned, Ayinde rushing 6'10", uh, 218 power forward, 4.5 four star player. Uh, just about anything you could want in a player. 17.5 points per game, 10.7 rebounds per game, almost a block and almost a steal. Uh, so he is a player at only 25 years old. We can build around. He's locked up long-term, four years. So there is, uh, there's no doubt we can hang on to him. And uh, I think we're going to uh, be very, very happy to build a team around him. Uh, what is most exciting, there's not a whole lot of uh, other great things on this roster. Roberto Roy, if you watched our early, early streams a couple weeks ago, he was a player I had looked at in the draft. Um, I didn't get the opportunity to draft him because I had a pick that was way too late. But um, he was a player I liked. So to, to be able to come into a situation where I get a chance to have him on the team now is pretty cool. And uh, the contract situation for this team is excellent. As you can see, rushing is really the only big contract here. So we're going to have cap space to play with. And, uh, you know, with Orlando, Ernest Mooring was our, uh, you know, star player for three straight seasons. He's an all-league player, and uh, he's a free agent. So maybe uh, maybe I can bring him to Phoenix and uh, kind of continue things with, uh, with Mooring. Well, we'll see. We'll see when we get to free agency what happens. Uh, as for the team here, what do we need? We need one of everything other than the power forward and center. I'm okay with Roy uh, playing at center, but we really could use one of everything else. So when we get to the draft, it will be uh, sort of best player available, I think, that we'll be looking for. I think Phoenix will probably have uh, somewhere around the, the 12th or, or 15th pick, somewhere in that range. Uh, let's take a look at the rookie guide. And Phoenix is projected to take Solomon Hall, uh, the point guard. 
aggressive player who gets to the line often, but we need a guy who, a, a point guard, who will be able to get the ball to rushing and Roy. Uh, so he's definitely a player uh, we can consider. Uh, looking at the top point guards in the draft, there's four others that are ranked higher than him. So it looks like it's going to be uh, maybe a, a good year for point guards in the draft. So if any of these guys fall, we might be able to, to grab one of them too. Uh, let's move over to the workout screen and start inviting some of these guys in. Uh, let's start with uh, let's start with Hall, and we'll uh, see what he can do. As soon as we can find him on the list down here. Uh, only ranked as one star, two star potential. So not uh not really excited about that but we'll we'll see uh let's look uh let's go back to the top here and see now i don't have staff ratings because this was not my staff so uh, anything that would have carried over from orlando doesn't this season so it's a little bit difficult drafting blind but just like a real general manager you walk into a new job you don't have that old data with you anymore so we can uh We'll take a look at, at uh, and do the best we can here. Uh, Devin Watson, he was one of the, the point guards that was interested in. He's projected to go seventh, but you never know. We might uh, be able to get uh, him if he falls. A lot of big men. We don't really need a big, so that's going to be tough. Let's go for Casey Jackson. Uh, we don't need a power for Rod Inge, projected 13th. That could be a guy that we look for. So we'll bring him in. Uh, Ryan Copeland. Go for him. Uh, Lensley out of Duke. So many power forwards and centers, though. I hate to... I mean, I guess uh, we still should consider some just in case. Uh, just in case something happens. Where we could possibly make a trade. But uh, we, I don't want to spend too many workouts on guys I probably won't want. Uh, let's see what we got down here. Uh, Gray. Not a lot standing out here. Ballas, I saw his name earlier. Uh, he's projected to go really high, but he doesn't seem like it. Uh, so we'll bring him in. Maybe he's a little overrated. Thornton. Uh, let's see. Let's go and look at some combine results and see if we can uh, find anybody here who might be interesting. Uh, that's pretty decent shooting there from Stacy Brodna. Uh, we'll give him an invite. Again, a power forward I'm very good at, so we don't. That's my starter player rushing now. Don't need to uh, worry about him. Looking across uh, the board here, and by the way, thank you for joining us here in the Steam Room uh, or the uh, Twitch Room, rather. If you uh, have any questions or suggestions or anything else, feel free to throw it in the chat box there. I'm happy to respond. I love to uh, converse with everybody while while we do this. Uh, if you have questions about the game itself, strategy, how things work, how you can do something better, uh, I'm certainly happy to share any of the tips and, and secrets that I can. Uh, we've got uh, two more invites here we can we can use up. And uh, let's see, anybody who is a really good scorer that maybe has gone under the radar? This guy is almost 20 and, and 9. Uh, maybe uh, Looking for a late round pick there, Gamer Rocco. Hi, hey Rocco, how are you doing? Good to see you. Nice to uh, see a long time, long time supporter of the game here. Uh, I know he, uh, Rocco has been uh, streaming way longer than we have. We just got into it and uh, kind of getting our feet wet still. So uh, it's really cool to see you here. Uh, one more invite to go, and uh, let's see, is there? A uh, point guard that may go overlooked. We can definitely use that. 
All right, so we're good there. We've got all of our uh, pre-draft workouts ready now. And uh, I'm getting, I'm excited. I, I, I like that Orlando team a lot. Uh, I thought that we really had a chance to, to do something with that team. Unfortunately, it just didn't work out. But uh, you know, it's a new, a new challenge now, uh, moving into the draft here. And uh, let's see if we have any emails we have to deal with before the draft. Uh, nope, nothing. Uh, there's uh, more, and we talked about him on the free agency list. Um, love to get him back. Uh, uh, Pru Ackerman, any plans for a native Mac port in the future? That is probably the, the most asked question we get. I think we probably get that question every single day. We are working uh, on doing it if possible. We need uh, a little bit of cooperation from Microsoft and, and Apple, somebody to, to help make the port. Uh, to make the Windows things run without needing uh, the, uh, you know, on Mac, if you have Parallels or something like that, something where you can run a Windows environment, it can run. Um, unfortunately, outside of that, it can't right now, but we definitely want to do it. We're, you know, it's definitely on the radar. You know, some people ask us about mobile. That's not on the radar, but Mac absolutely is. If we can, if it's at all possible, we want to do it. We're not, uh, not in any way wanting to ignore the Mac audience. It's just the uh, the software isn't able to do it just yet. But we're we're getting closer on things that we can do on our end while we wait for a, a little bit of collaboration on the other end. Hopefully. Uh, so let's uh, let's get ready for the draft here again. We need a lot of things. We need one of everything other than power forward. Really. So uh, hope we can score somebody here. And uh, because I, uh, you know, I, if I'm playing offline, I could play the draft and run the draft for, you know, hours. I mean, I could just let the clock run down, let everybody make their picks, all that kind of stuff. I love watching the stuff at the bottom of the screen where it tells, uh, you know, who's the lineup, what they need, best players available, things like that. Uh, for the purpose of the stream, though, we try to move uh, mostly just through our picks. So let's move over to our pick and see uh, see who's on the board for us. And uh, we can look and, and check out the uh, the ticker down here. We see Snead is gone, Will Richardson. Those were the easy top two picks. Uh, after that, things were interesting. Uh, Mary Smith, John Williamson, Lonnie Clawson. So Ralph Childress is available as the best point guard. Uh, that was a player I believe we brought in for a workout. Gibran Gibson was another player we brought in for a workout. So I, I'd like to see that we have a couple options of the best player available. Uh, and, and we could use really any of those guys. Uh, there's Ballas. That was a guy that we had looked at. Uh, so let's go into the war room and see what we got here. Uh, now our staff has had a chance to evaluate some of these guys. Wow, uh, Ralph Childress, they give him a four-star evaluation here. Uh, that's that's very interesting, even though, I mean, it's such a huge discrepancy, so I, I don't know uh, who to trust on that one. But we can uh, look at the detail and see... Uh, B in scoring, B in stealing. That would be, uh, that would be excellent. Uh, so I, I might, uh, might consider him. Uh, let's see. We also uh, looked at Gibson. Uh, let's see what the, what we learned about him from the workouts. Uh, B scoring, uh, average work ethic. So. Uh, they're not, our uh, staff isn't overly high on him. Uh, Solomon Hall was the player we were projected to take. Uh, let's check out what we learned about him. Just uh, just average stuff, and this is why um, you, uh, you, you know, you do this, this, the scouting and, and the workouts because sometimes you, 
you might stumble onto something like uh, possibly we have here with uh, Childress. Uh, let's see, Prue Ackerman, uh, you bought college basketball and a copy of Crossover for Mac. Uh, if there's uh, if there's something we can do, I mean, I, I don't know. We don't have Mac, so that's a problem. We can't troubleshoot it. But um, I, I know Parallels worked. I don't know uh, much about Crossover. But, um, you know, we definitely uh, definitely keep watching us and see uh, see if we can get something done there. Um, meanwhile, back in the draft, I think we're going to take a shot on Childress. Uh, it's just kind of a gamble here at this pick, but I don't think there's anybody that's you know really jumping off the you know the board at me, and maybe the staff here knows something that uh, nobody else does. So we're gonna take Childress and see what happens here. Six three one eighty seven out of Wisconsin, Milwaukee. Averaged almost twenty points per game, six assists, almost six rebounds, two point two steals. Uh, so decent college stats there. Let's see. Uh, Let's see what the experts have to say. They usually don't like my picks, but uh, we'll see. And I'm interested to see what Orlando does right on the clock here at uh, 18, right behind us. Uh, yeah, obviously they think, Childress, that we took a a big leap there. Uh, maybe he's uh, the proverbial two years away from being two years away. But we'll uh, we'll see. Uh, if he works out and truly does become, uh, you know, a three or four star player at the 17th pick in the draft, uh, that's phenomenal. We couldn't beat that, so I don't mind taking a gamble there. Um, I'm curious to see who Orlando will take, so we'll just do uh, that one. Uh, Mills Alexander, a center. Uh, that makes sense because the the starting center we had there was was an older player, uh, so you know. That makes sense. Not very impressive stats, but uh, we'll see. I'll still be rooting for them as long as we're not playing. That's part of the reason, too. I uh, I went over to the, the West instead of the East. I didn't really want to go up against Orlando, right away at least. Uh, let's move on to our second round pick. And uh, hopefully they have their second round pick and they didn't trade it away. Actually, if they did trade it away, it'd be... <laughs> Fine. We don't have to keep the second round pick in the game. Uh, you are, you know, the first round picks are guaranteed. The second round picks are not. And uh, I guess they did not have their second round pick, so uh, that's okay. We, uh, I want the cap space anyways, and we don't have to worry about it now. So uh, Ralph Childress, uh, two star overall to start. Hopefully he can reach that. Uh, that potential that we're hoping for. They've lowered the potential now here. Um, it, you know, it, it's just a, the, what you see in the draft room is just a staff. Uh, you know, what you see here takes into account your own ratings and things like that for the player. So that's why it, it'll be different there. But I'm uh, I'm excited to see if he can help us. We don't even have a point guard in the roster at this point. So uh, that's a help. The alerts is something I always try to show at least once in these streams just so people remember to check them. It just kind of reminds you what to do. Uh, so say it's today on the contract day to look in your email box. And uh, it tells you, uh, you know, today you can renounce contracts, uh, which we'll be doing so that we can free up the cap space. There's no reason to have uh, cap holds if we're playing with cap, you know, playing for cap space. So uh, we, we want to clear up as much room as possible and uh, picking up any options. So let's see if we have uh, we have a lot of players here that we can, I mean, we have to look at all these, all these cap holds here would eat up all of our cap space. So we're just going to go on a little bit of a renouncing spree here. And... If we want these guys back, we can get them in free agency. And uh, that was really the most attractive part of this Phoenix job was the opportunity to uh, have some free agent space. And as you can see for next year, just Roy and Childress uh, would be on the books. So uh, we are in great financial state, we should be able to meet our uh, 
goals of the ownership this time. As we have two more renouncements to do. Uh, let's see. This guy could be a qualifying offer, but he's not worth anything. So he's getting renounced as well. So we are all set. Look at that. We've got the salary down to 52 million now. So we will have big cap space. Uh, and let's, let's look around the league and see. Uh, nobody else has done their renouncements yet, so uh, we won't know the true cap space for anybody else. But 56, almost 57 million dollars in cap space. So pretty excited about that. We uh, we can go for a max. We can do a lot of a lot of things here. And let's see, let's see what happened with the cap space. Charlotte freed up 60 million, so we uh, we are second with the cap space available. And uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine teams under the cap. Really, only Toronto, maybe LA. These four teams would be us and the other three teams in for making big offers on somebody. So uh, we are ready for summer league. Uh, we need to go over to our roster and send uh, Childress to summer league. Uh, Mouton can go to Summer League. Basically anybody who is available to I'll send to Summer League. Higgins Hendricks, I like that name. So the uh, most of the roster is going to Summer League other than rushing. But that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, and if you remember from last year, uh, if you watched the last year's stream, I found a point guard in summer league who played really well and was able to sign him during free agency. So there is a reason to, to do this, to spend a couple of minutes, um, you know, going through here, you might, you might find somebody who, uh, who surprises you with how they play in summer league. And, uh, you might want to pick them up. Uh, we'll grab Jesse Ward here. We definitely need to find another point guard. Uh, probably we'll be doing that through free agency, but, We'll bring one in uh, just in case here and see if he can do anything in Summer League. Uh, another big man would help too here uh, for Summer League. Preferably a center if there's one. I'll we'll go with Kreider here. Uh, and then after that, we'll just see if there's anybody who's I got a decent rating in anything. Defense, I always look to see if we can find a, a decent defender, maybe. Uh, not that we need more power forwards, but uh, let's try Joe May. And uh, one more guy. We'll bring in Amarin Gogiachevelli, or something to that effect. So into the summer league we go. Don't really care about the wins and losses here uh, for summer league. I just kind of sim through it and look at the stats afterwards and see what happened. But definitely looking to see if we can find uh, anybody who might be uh, a keeper in free agency and, and see how our own players do as you know, especially our first round pick. Hopefully, uh, he'll prove better than the experts thought he would. So we are finished with Summer League here. We'll save right before we go into free agency. And let's take a look at the stats. For our Summer League roster, children, 17.5 points per game. Uh, 1.3 steals, 4 assists, 4.7 rebounds, so pretty good there. Mike Williams, wow, uh, 27 points per game. Uh, he is uh, one year left on his contract. Last year he averaged 8.9 points per game. Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully he can get some minutes for us as a backup. 
Uh, let's see his situation. Uh, we could offer him an extension. He wants $9 million. Yeah. We'll wait. We'll wait and see. But it's, it's good to know kind of what he's looking for. $9 million would be reasonable if he uh, is decent. And we don't want to commit too much of our cap space next year until we see how things play out here. Uh, but looking at our roster, really, we've got uh, a star power forward, and we've got an okay center. Uh, we've got plenty of power forwards. So we need some guards big time. Um, wouldn't mind a backup center for Roy. And also wouldn't mind uh, maybe one more good score, even if he's a small forward like, uh, like Mooring, possibly. Let's take a look at the free agency magazine, free agency preview and see uh, what kind of players are out here. A um, couple of big-time five-star players. I would love to steal somebody from Miami for all the times they've beaten me, but those guys are restricted free agents, so probably going to get any offers there matched. I'd rather spend the uh, the money on unrestricted guys. There's Mooring right there. Favorite to go back to Orlando, but... We can offer him a lot of money. We can offer him a max. Uh, maybe we can bring him away. Uh, let's see if anybody is interested in us as a favorite. A lot of guys here. Uh, Terry Heron, uh, restricted free agent. Anthony Kosick. Don't really want to spend big money on the center. Uh, Jimmy Card. It's kind of interesting. He was uh, an excellent scorer and assist. So free agent from Philadelphia. So he's a player that uh, that we're going to make a note of and possibly target because we need a, guard, a point guard. I mean, I don't expect that the guy we drafted will be a starter. Uh, let's see, taking a look at other guys, two and a half stars. So these guys are all decent players, but nobody I would spend huge money on right out of the, right out of the gate. Um, a lot of guys interested. Obviously, we have a lot of cap space, so that helps. That you know, that helps get people interested. Uh, but uh, Jimmy Card and Ernest Mooring seem like uh, the initial targets that uh, I'm probably gonna go after. Mooring is 32, so he's not a young guy, but I know what he's capable of, um, and I would love to have him on this team. So let's see. Uh, max, we can. He wants the max. We can offer a max. I don't know about four years though. He'd be 36. And then, yeah, that's in a 15 years vet at that point. So I'm not uh, not crazy about the idea of a four-year offer, but maybe three. We at least get at least get one really good season out of him. Uh, maybe we'll make that last year a team option. If we have to, maybe go four years with a team option. Um, you know, that's that might be a way to go so that we can get out of that contract if we need to. But uh, I'm, I'm definitely interested in mooring. Uh, let's find Jimmy Card. I like the new search uh, feature I have in the game now. It's, it's so much easier to find players. He's a veteran, too, 33 years old. Uh, been in the league 11 years. So I'm not really looking to make a long-term offer uh, there, but definitely for a year, maybe while uh, while we see what we have with Childress as a backup, that could work. Let's see what he's looking for. $16 million a year uh, for three years. We can do that if we want to. Uh, I don't know... I don't think I want to go that high, though. Let's try 12 years. Or, I mean, <laughs> two years, 12 million. Uh, but, oh, we can't go more than 4.5% on that one. Uh, so we'll see. We'll throw that offer out there. That would still leave us with 6 million. We could do something with. Uh, let's Let's take a look and see. I don't want to necessarily commit too much of the money up front, just in case uh, 
something else happens, but maybe we can put an offer in on a shooting guard if we find somebody that uh, that would be young and, and interesting and willing to, to take six, you know, six or seven million, something like that. Um, I would like. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be a score, but uh, somebody who's a good shooter. Always useful. Always useful to have a good shooter and a decent defender. Bailey, 30. Everybody's kind of old, though. <clears throat> so for a rebuilding team, um, I don't know if, if that's the way I want to go, but uh, possibly maybe if we just fill in guys who are you know, winning players, uh, you know, maybe that, that's enough with uh, rushing to get ourselves to the playoffs and make it and make a run with this team. Uh, Bailey averaged 7.8 points per game last year. Uh, let's see. He shot 45% for three. That's pretty solid. Um, let's see. What is he looking for money-wise? He averaged 20, almost 23 minutes per game. So used to not playing a huge role. Uh, he wants 11 million. Uh, all we have is about six and a half to offer him. Uh, I don't think he'll go for that, but we can try. We can throw that out there and see what he what he says. So we've got Bailey Mooring and uh, Jimmy Card that we're targeting right off the bat. Usually not a lot of action in the early days of signing players. But uh, we'll at least get an idea where uh, Bailey Morning and Card are right now. If they keep our offers on the table, or if they just outright reject us. Uh, Bison signed Justin Venner, three-year contract, and our offers Bailey Mooring. They're still on the table, still considering us. So uh, we're pretty good there. Let's go another day and see see if anything happens. Again, these are all veteran players, so uh, I, I'm okay with putting together a, a quick veteran team because we do have a star young player. Uh, Miami resigns Levy. Chicago, very active early on here. Uh, let's see. Let's look at the media. Sometimes there's news stories. Uh, uh, Mooring, they're claiming five years, $158 million. Uh Obviously, that's a, that's a massive contract, five years. We can't offer him the five years because we don't have the bird rights on him. Uh, so I don't, I don't, you know, we don't have high hopes there, obviously. Uh, Orlando's going to want to keep him. We may have to up the offer, though. And that, that news report for anybody watching, uh, just so you know, that's not necessarily true. That's what the agent is putting out into the media. Uh, there may not be a five-year offer from Orlando, and it may not be a five-year max offer from Orlando. It may not be anything uh, to that effect at all. Uh, so on mooring, if we clear the contract... We... Uh, if we go with the max, we could go uh, the team option in the fourth year and at least not be stuck with that, possibly. But I'd really like to uh, to get him, so I'd like to make that offer if we can. We'll, we'll throw out four years, 163. That would be better than the reported offer from Orlando. Uh, and as you saw, his top team said Miami. Uh, so he, he might want to be jumping ship anyways at this point. But we'll see if money talks and can bring him to Phoenix. I would hate to lose out to Miami again. Miami has been a thorn in my side for the first three seasons I was with Orlando. Uh, there we go. Phoenix signs Ernest Mooring four years with a team option for $163 million. So Mooring comes, uh, we continue on with Ernest Mooring, and that's going to be a nice one-two punch with Mooring and rushing. 
a lot of scoring uh, between those two guys. We're down to 12 million uh, with cap space. Still have our offers out here for Card and Bailey. <clears throat> Didn't address the center position yet, but uh, we could always look for <clears throat> a backup or we have a lot of power forwards. We have four of them on the roster. We can always slide one uh, to do some backup duty for Roy. But to get Mooring, that's a nice grab for us. Even though I, I think we overpaid, uh, it's just I think it's important to grab a player here while we can and, and use that cap space for something like that. There really wasn't anybody else that, that was going to be a better option than that. I, you know, the restricted guys were better and younger perhaps, but also could be matched. So there is, uh, I, I'd rather go for the sure thing, the ability to sign an unrestricted guy, and I'm really happy to, to grab Mooring. Bailey and Card still considering our offers. As we uh, move into the middle portion of free agency now. No signings today. Still looking at Bailey and Card. See if there's anything in the media from any of them. Anthony Rhodes looking for three years. Seventeen and a half million, roughly. Uh, let's go and look at uh, go back to the free agency screen. Uh, anybody that we didn't really take, let's see, Rhodes. Oh, he's young, solid player too. We could uh, could consider him and maybe play him at the two or play a small ball lineup with uh, rushing at the five. Let's see, excellent stats last year, too. And if he's only looking for, what was it, let's check again, 17, is what they were saying. Well, we could definitely do that. And I'd love to beat Miami at something. Uh, maybe we'll give uh, him a shot. And, uh, let's see. If we drop, we'd have to drop the offer on card, I think. Let's see what he's looking for. Oops, wrong button. Oh, he wants big money. He's holding up for big money, so I don't think uh, I don't think he's going to sign for Miami for that small offer that was being reported. That could be uh, a purposely erroneous report. Sometimes the game throws those out at you too, just to keep you guessing. Just like the real media, not everybody knows everything that's going on. If he does sign for that little, though, I'll be upset that we didn't try to make a, a better push for him. But I'd like Card to to make a decision here because we've got a lot of money tied up in an offer to him. Miami resigns Mel Hickman. If uh, if Bailey and Card don't come around on an offer pretty quick, we might have to pull it and and come back to them to see if we we could grab somebody else in the meantime. Uh, and yeah, there goes uh, Rhodes, four years, $116 million. We weren't going to be in that neighborhood. So he got his big money. He got his big money. Charlotte uh, picks up Lukianov on an offer sheet that will probably get matched, which is why we weren't targeting him. Let's see, Lee Dickerson is <clears throat> kind of interesting here, uh, as we could use another center. Let's see what uh, what kind of money he's looking for. $20 million. yeah, that's, that's a lot of money. That's not something we're able to invest right now. Uh, I'd really like Card to do something. He's got to make a decision here soon. Maybe we'll check in with him, and uh, if we're not getting anywhere there. We might have to look for a different point guard option. There are some guys here, uh, like Xavier Jenkins. Let's compare. That's a terrible free throw shooter, though, so that's probably not a great option. Uh, Mike Wilson, uh, pretty close. 
pretty close there. Let's see, uh, let's see what kind of money he'd be looking for. Six, uh, almost 17 million. Uh, let's see. Let's look at his stats from last year. Only 5.8 points per game. Uh, not a whole lot of playing time with Miami last year. So might be just a guy that uh, just needs a chance to play. Not very projective in his shooting. Uh, definitely struggled there. So maybe not somebody that we're uh, that interested. Yeah, lousy three-point shooter. Carr is not really much better there either, though. So I'm, I'm kind of disappointed. Uh, that, that he hasn't taken our money because outside of his points per game, I mean, that's not a very efficient points per game. We may need to just kind of move on and, and see if we can find somebody else. Stories, sort of interesting. Uh, not a big score, but both Story and uh, Royton shot the three well. Um, maybe... Uh, one of those two guys might be interesting. They're both younger than Card too. Let's see what kind of money they're looking for. Uh, Thirteen million. So that would be in the range of Card. And uh, Story's looking for fourteen million. So I think we're going to move on from Card, at least for the time being. Maybe we'll uh, come back if we have to, but. Let's go for Royton instead. We can offer him almost what he's looking for. And he's only 27. Although Ross Bailey's only 24 here, but I like the numbers from Royton. Um, and, and if you guys in the, the the chat, if you throw out anybody that you know you think we should go for or whatever, I'm always happy to uh, to investigate and take suggestions. But I think for right now, we're going to try to make an offer here. Uh, we can go for we can give him he only wants three years, so we can give him the three years he wants and almost what he's looking for. So we'll throw that out there uh, and, and see if we uh if we can land somebody from Miami, poach one of their players, get back at them somehow for all the uh the beatings they've laid on us. Or at least me as Orlando. Uh Charlotte with a signing there. So Royton and Bailey still uh, still out there. As we advance another day, we are down to the last 10 days or so now in free agency. So hopefully players are starting to realize that the money is uh, going to be drying up soon. And uh, they can get moving on taking some offers here. Here we go. Joe, Joe Royton, three-year contract. So we steal him from Miami, uh, and there goes Bailey. Uh, he takes two years at twenty-two million, which is better than the three years at twenty million we were offering him. Uh, so we've got some cap space back since uh, that offer didn't work out. But we've got Royton, so uh, that's pretty exciting. Six and a half million left in cap still. Uh, looks like he's a little bit better than Childress. Let's take a look at our roster as constructed right now. See what we're looking for. Uh, we could definitely still use a guard, it looks like. And uh, definitely a backup center. Those are probably the last two things uh, we're looking for. I don't think we'll find starters at this point, but... Uh, Mouton is a six defensively. He could be an okay starter. Uh, Mooring and Rushing are going to do the heavy lifting anyways. And uh, uh, Royton and Roy look decent. Uh, so I, I think we've got an okay lineup. But I think we just need to look for some backups here. So a, a backup shooting guard and a backup center that we could... Uh, we can either spend all the money on one guy and offer a minimum contract to uh, to somebody else, or we could try to split it. Uh, let's, let's sort by overall and see who's out here uh, for centers and shooting guards. Uh, we can actually just filter by those two positions. 
I think I'm more concerned about the shooting guard just because we I do have other power forwards that could slide over and play center. Um, anybody who's a good shooter. Good shooters are always valuable. A um, couple decent guys here. These guys both had uh, a couple of guys. Nice seasons last year. Probably looking for more money than uh, I have to offer, but uh, we can we can look him up. Philip Porter. Uh, he's looking for eight million over two years. Uh, we have six and a half. We can offer him. We can consider him. Willis is another guy. Uh, he's looking for eight and a half. And I think Otis Dean was the other was the other guy who was a big score. He's looking for even more. Um, oh, I was looking at minutes per game, not points per game. That was my mistake. <laughs> uh, Maurice Willis, 11.4 points per game. Let's see what he's looking for. Eight and a half million. Uh, he shot 42% for three. That's not bad. I mean, decent numbers there. Not a great defender, but he could come off the bench uh, possibly and be a scorer. And he's only 26. So I mean, we, I think we can uh, we could give him the two years he's looking for. So let's try uh, Murray Swift. See if we can get a shooting guard, and then worry about um, our backup center after that. You know, one reason not to offer a minimum contract right now to uh, somebody else is that I didn't want. Uh, you know, if that guy signs, that money would come off the cap. Instead, so I would lose out in the six and a half million I had. Uh, as expected, Indiana matched that offer. Um, Oklahoma City signs Jimmy Card. He finally signs three years, forty-six million. That's that's a lot of money. I think that was more than we were offering him. So good for him, I guess. I'm I'm happy with uh, with what we ended up with, though. Let's go another day. We've still got a few more days left in free agency. And there, I don't think there was really any centers that I was crazy about having. I'd rather fill up this void at shooting guard if we can. Uh, Lee Dickerson, he was a name I was looking at there. Phoenix signs Maurice Willis two years, $13.2 million. Uh, and that's that's not bad, a two-year deal. So if it's, if it's not working out, it's easy to get rid of. So we have got uh, we've got our guards uh, signed here with Royton and Willis, and now we can focus on trying to find a backup big man for Roberto Roy. Uh, and with Mooring, I'm I'm pretty excited about uh, how this free agency session has worked out so far. Uh, quick save while I kind of look at the guys in the background here, looking for somebody who will take, you know, minimum contract. Uh, somebody who can come off bench defense would be great if he can come off the bench defense and do a little bit of rebounding. Doesn't even have to score at all. Uh, I think we'll be okay scoring wise. Uh, Delonte Tarver looks interesting. No, not really a great, sh no, no great shot blockers here. I wonder why Michael Martin didn't get uh, any interest yet. He's looking for a lot of money. We're looking for somebody who will uh, play for the minimum here. We'll throw an offer out on Tarver just so we get one out here. Uh, I don't expect he'll take it, but you know if. Uh, if he's not getting offers and he finally gets one here as we uh, only have about a week left in free agency, uh, he might go for it. So we'll see. Uh, there's Michael Martin right there. Uh, three years, $48 million, back to New York. New York's a good team. Uh, other than that, nothing really earth-shattering there. Tarver's still at least considering the offer. So he must not have a lot of interest. So that would be good for us if we could pick him up. 
So that would give us, uh, even if, if Roy and, and Tarver were to supply two minutes, that would be pretty solid. Oh, a lot of offers here. Uh, let's see, are we on the list anywhere? Or is Tarver on the list? Oh, Denver signs in two years. Yeah, <laughs> big time money. We only are offering him the minimum, so uh, that wasn't going to happen, I guess. Uh, Slaughter was an interesting player. Uh, New, York, uh, New Orleans re-signs him. Three years, $90 million. That's probably a decent deal for them. A lot of one-year offers, tender offers. Players getting tired of being restricted free agents. Uh, so we're back to looking for a center with just a couple days left in free agency. And uh, looking for somebody who can play defense. Let me block a shot or two, do a little bit of rebounding. Not a lot out here. Uh, anybody, anybody play last year at least? Ivan Jackson, uh, he got some minutes last year. Uh, we can see if we can throw out an offer there. Uh, we can offer him the best offer we can make is the minimum now. We used up all of our cap space. But it's alright. We've got uh, we've got Mooring. We got a nice backcourt combo. I think we didn't need stars. We got Mooring and Rushing to do the scoring. Uh, let's see. Orlando makes a signing. Mike Parkett. Uh, uh, Jackson. I don't see him on the list here, so he should still be available. And he's still considering our offer with just. Uh, just a couple days left in free agency. So excited for a new challenge here in Phoenix. Uh, with Orlando, I went to the playoffs all three seasons. Wasn't good enough for ownership, though. And uh, now a new challenge here in Phoenix. A uh, bunch of one-year offers. Maybe Jackson would prefer a one-year offer, but uh, we're willing to, to make it, too. Or maybe he'd like it with a player option. We could try that, too. Um, let's see. That way he could opt out if he has a good season. So we can offer him a, a player option in the second year. Rather than being locked in for two, he might take take us up on that. And we did sign Mooring with the team option, so uh, we, we can get rid of that contract in the last year if we need to. Uh, still don't see Jackson. That's Austin Jackson. We weren't going after him. So we will uh, keep going. Four days left now in free agency. Hopefully Jackson's uh, getting tired of holding out for a better offer, and we'll take ours, but we'll see. whole bunch of signings here, and Phoenix gets, uh, we get Ivan Jackson with his player option. So we are good. We're done here. We filled out the roster with four signings in free agency, and I think it's uh, it's going to be a, a solid team. Definitely one that should be a playoff caliber team. You know, I, I know, you know, Mooring, like I said, was a first team all league the last three seasons. So I added him with Rushing, who is a phenomenal young player. The other parts just have to do their job. They have to defend. They have to rebound. They have to get the ball to uh, Mooring and Rushing. And we'll be all set. So uh, we get through free agency. We will save the roster here. Uh Let's see, Royton, Roy, two and a half star players. That's you know, that's not bad. It's not, you have to remember when you're looking at the star ratings in the game that this isn't like 2K or something where you know everybody could be really highly rated. A two and a half star player is still a, a starting caliber player. You know, he's still a very serviceable player here. Uh, not everybody can be a four and a half, five star player. And when you see players like that, they mean something. You know, the, the five, four-star player guys are excellent players. And there's not, you know, 
a ton of them in the game. Uh, let's take a look at our email, see what uh, we need to do now. Rookie option, deadline. I don't think we have any to pick up. Oh, I guess we do. Uh, Ronald Baum and Mike Smith. Uh, let's look at the roster and see if these guys are guys we want to keep around, possibly. Uh, Baum, I think we will. Smith, probably not. Uh, I doubt he did. No, he spent all last season. The D-League didn't even do much there. So he's probably not coming back. Uh, let's see, Baum played with Phoenix last year. Uh, he he was a contributor, so we'll pick up his option, and we're going to let Smith uh, finish out here, and he'll be done. And this will be the fourth season and the final year of Baum's rookie contract. Uh, and like I said, Smith will be letting go. And uh, if this team is what we bring back next year, we could have a little bit of cap space. Um, to deal with with next year, work with next year, and if, if more, you know, Mooring is a player we could possibly trade next year. I think once we get into 2024 season, that might be too old to start trading him. But if if this doesn't look like it's going to be a team that works and can make a playoff run, we could always look to move him out. But for now, uh, we're happy to have him back, or at least I'm happy to have him back as. Uh, I know what he's capable of doing. Uh, I'm playing in a local mode, which means I'm only the general manager. So the, the coaches are in charge of uh, doing training camp and, and making the depth chart decisions and all that kind of stuff. I can take over if I want. Uh, for anybody who's not that familiar with the game, I can take over. I can fire the head coach and take control myself um, if I want to and, and serve dual roles. But... Uh, I don't really want to. I like playing just as a general manager. And if you haven't tried the game, by the way, go to www.wolverinestudios.com. Try a free demo. You know, you download it, put in your email address, get that link right away, and uh, and you'll you'll be playing in no time. There's also tons of mods and stuff. Um, in our forums, our community does a great job making mods and supporting the game. And uh, you can see it's it's a ton of fun. You'll, you'll really not you're not going to find a better you know, pro basketball GM experience than this game. Uh, training camp. Childress has improved uh, from training camp, so he's moved to a two-and-a-half star player now. Uh, D-League assignment. I don't think, uh, I don't know if anybody if will be assigning any of these players to the D-League. Maybe, uh, maybe Smith again, because I don't know if he'll have a ton of playing time. Let's look at the initial depth chart and see. Uh, actually, he doesn't have much use for Hendricks at this point. Not even for Jackson. I guess he's going to try to go with uh, some of the other power forwards as Roy's backup. And as of right now, we're looking like he's going to start Childress, but kind of split time with Royton, uh, both playing even minutes. So that's yeah, interesting that, that uh, Childress might get the opportunity to start. Our Willis and Mooring were other free agency signings, and obviously Mooring's going to get big minutes. Uh, let's go to our roster, and there's no point in Hendricks sitting up here and not playing. Uh, he's only 22, so maybe there's some hope for him. Um, I guess we, let's see, can we assign him to the D-League? Uh, he must not be eligible to assign to the D-League. So I guess he's staying up here with us. Uh, Smith we could send back down. But I guess we'll give, you know, the coaching staff says he might get a few minutes this year. So I guess we'll see. We will uh, we'll just start with the roster that we have here. And uh, we'll get ready. We'll move through the, uh, the D-League. You, you can also control your D-League team if you want. Uh, you can You can be responsible for who they pick and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm I'm not doing that. I just I was up to the uh, the guys running the D League run everything, so they can handle whoever they pick up and draft. As long as they uh, play players, I send down. You know, as long as guys I send down are getting minutes, 
that's all I care about. And you know, right now there's nobody to send down because we only had the one draft pick in this in this draft, and it looks like he's possibly going to be a starter, which uh, I'd really like to see him do well. Since the experts said that that was a crazy pick, and uh, that we made a huge leap there in the, the back half of the first round, you know, I don't I don't see how you can make a a terrible pick when you're picking 17th or whatever it was because. I mean, you're really not going to grab a star, you know, unless it was just something that nobody expected to be a star, which could be the case here. So the D-League uh, draft is winding up here. And uh, looking at the, the roster I've assembled for this year, it's uh, it's really, we kept rushing and Roy, basically, and then trying to build around those guys. I think mooring and rushing are going to be a really good combination. I think that's going to be a strong scoring combination. Nice one-two punch. Uh, with Orlando, I did have a big three. Mooring was one of them. He was the big one of the big three. Uh, so I don't think we have quite a big three here, but we've got an awfully big two. And I think the other guys can uh, can fill in. And uh, and make this a successful team. All right, Phoenix did get to the playoffs, and we did uh, we did gut a lot of the players as we you know renounced everybody's contract was up. But I don't think any of those players were really key components. I think it was just rushing and and everybody else kind of filled in a spot around him, from what I could tell. Um, so I, I'm I'm not worried about kind of the the wholesale changes that that I've made taking over here. I think it's going to improve the team a lot, in fact, this year, because they didn't have a player as good as Mooring. So if we've got Mooring with rushing and then the improvements from Roy and, uh, you know, the other guys we picked up and draft, you know, I think that that makes for a solid team. And I think that uh, this team, who was the eighth seed last year, uh, can improve on that. So that's that's my goal. And the ownership's only asking to make the playoffs. It's not not asking to make a big, deep run in the playoffs or anything like that. They'll be happy if we make a playoff appearance. I've got the salary where they want. Uh, rushing is not going to go anywhere. So if we make the playoffs, you know, everything should be good uh, on my end for, you know, for keeping my job here. And as, you know, as you see, even being successful in Orlando, that wasn't enough. I didn't meet ownership's demands. And uh, I didn't, you know, I didn't spend what I spent way more than they wanted. And, uh, you know, they weren't happy about it. We didn't make the deep run that they wanted. So, you know, even if you win, that's sometimes not enough. It's not enough just to have a winning record sometimes. Prior to the season, I always like to go and check out the uh, season preview and the fantasy guy. The fantasy guy is kind of fun because it just kind of tells you who the game's would suggest it's the top 50 players. Brent Wilson still number one. He was number one last year, and uh, that was who Indiana spent all their cap room on. Uh, let's see if uh, we've got anybody up here. Uh, there's rushing. So uh, only 25 years old. He is the uh, face of the franchise going forward. Jamar Thompson from Orlando, that was a guy that... Uh, I had re-signed back there. There's Ernest Mooring right ahead of him. So we've got two in the top 50. Uh, that's pretty solid. You know, there's uh, Overton from Orlando, too, if you were following along earlier. Uh, we had Overton, Thompson, and Mooring. But uh, I'm happy to have Mooring now. 32, he's still got some good basketball left in him. Uh, let's see if we have anybody who's under the radar here. Probably not. All right, let's go back and look at the season preview. And uh, I noticed Orlando, without me, uh, has now fallen, especially since I took uh, mooring from them. Uh, looking at their roster, uh, Owens, uh, Parquet, and Smith would be new to the starting lineup. Uh, let's go over to the West and find us. Wow, we are projected to not make the playoffs, uh, projected to be the third worst team. I think we can beat that projection. 
I, I would definitely definitely be surprised if we finish that low. If we do, we'll have a lottery pick uh, to pair with Mooring and Rushing next year and improving Roy and, and Childress. But uh, I would be surprised if we fall that low. I would be surprised. Uh, let's take a look at the depth chart and see what our coaches are thinking now that the season's going to begin. Childress, Willis, Mooring, Rushing, and Roy. So no changes from their initial thoughts. Uh, look like they're going to give Bohm a lot of minutes as we picked up his rookie option. Uh, so I, I'm looking forward to see uh, what he can do. But I think Mooring and Rushing is going to make a really, really nice team here. Uh, looking at the finances around the league, uh, a couple teams still didn't fill out all their cap space. Uh, our situation is... Uh, you know, solid next year we'll have a little bit of cap space, although if we have a first round pick we we might not. Um you know, we, we do have that pick, uh, I believe. Let's look and just make sure that the previous uh ownership hadn't traded away. Yep, we do have a full slate of picks moving forward. So I uh I, I think that uh this is gonna be an exciting season, the fourth season of the dynasty. Uh as we've done in the past, we're going to wrap up this stream right here uh, as just before we start the season. Our next stream, um, we'll, we'll see if we can get another one in this week. Otherwise, it'll be next Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. Uh, that's been our schedule so far, streams on uh, Tuesday at 7.30. And uh, last week, we did do one on Friday, so maybe we'll, we'll go again this later this week and, uh, and sim this season out and see how things start off for our Phoenix team. So thank you for joining me tonight. Uh, I appreciate the comments in the stream chat. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you uh, for the next stream. Make sure you are following us on Twitch. Make sure you have notifications enabled so that when we go live, you know, and you can jump in. And uh, fa follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And uh, make sure that uh, you're keeping up and uh, seeing uh, when we go live here. We want to see... Uh, more people come into our streams. We want to make this bigger. We have, uh, if you have any feedback, any ideas on how we can do that, uh, make it better for you, please share them. Drop us a line at www.wolverinestudios.com slash support. Uh, just open a ticket there and let us know what you think. So thanks for joining us, and we will see you next time.